Welcome to Practice Update. I'm your host, Dr. Aman Shah, and I'm delighted to be here with Dr. Matthias Preusser at ESMO. Welcome, Dr. Preusser. Welcome. Uh, so you are presenting an educational symposium, and part of it focuses on the neurologic uh, side effects of immunotherapy. What are the neurologic side effects of immunotherapy? So immunotherapies, as you know, um, have moved quickly into the field of oncology. Many cancer patients are being treated with immunotherapies. And there are several uh, toxicities that we know that we see every day uh, concerning the liver, the lung and so on. However, we have learned that also neurological side effects occur, um, both in the central nervous system and also in the peripheral nervous system. Um, we find that these are not very frequent however very relevant from a clinical uh, point of view and uh, of course uh, to the affected patients um, and um, the interesting thing is that these syndromes are very variable there are many different syndromes like multiple sclerosis type um, syndromes uh, like guillain barre syndromes myasthenic syndromes and also um, various um, affections of the peripheral nervous system and even of the muscular system like myopathies and necrotizing myopathies and how frequently do these occur um, depending on the type of drug uh, patients are exposed to at different rates um, with monotherapies, PD-1 inhibiting or CTLA-4 inhibiting uh, monotherapies in the range of between 1 and uh, maybe 5 or 6 percent. Um, when you combine immunotherapies, the rate seems to be higher. So for, um, for the combination of CTLA-4 and PD-1 inhibition rates of about 14 percent have been described. That is quite significant. Uh, I found it interesting that you said that there are syndromes rather than individual signs or symptoms. Uh, is there a way to prevent these uh, syndromes from occurring? Is this something you can do to mitigate this damage? Um, no, there, there, there's no clear uh, prevent, preventive strategy. I think when we get better in focusing our treatments at the right patients, uh, I think that's the, the best strategy. At the moment, we're using immunotherapies kind of in a say semi-stratified way, looking at pdl one status or other things, but we are not really good at identifying the patients upfront who will uh, pro uh, profit. And therefore, we expose patients to a risk of uh, toxicities, including neurotoxicities, um, who, um, who don't have a high, uh, high, uh, high um, benefit of the therapies. And how do you approach treating these toxicities? Uh, immunosuppressing, uh, so using immunosuppressive drugs. The mainstay of treatment is, of course, uh, corticosteroids. It gets a little bit complicated if patients progress with these toxicities on corticosteroids because then you have to escalate and use other immunosuppressive strategies and there it's a little bit unclear so far for the lack of, uh, of data how to do that. Um, intravenous uh, immunoglobulins uh, can be used, plasmapheresis can be used, or any of the other uh, available immunosuppressants. However, it's very difficult to, to give clear recommendations. That's something we have to work on and needs to be evaluated on a case-to-case -case basis. This is very useful. Thank you so much. Sure.